Our next guest is the author of a new book about her journey to not quite pop music superstardom. How to Fail as a Pop Star is a book that challenges the idea of success being the inevitable result of hard work and talent, but it's also a beautiful story of persistence and self-discovery. So I'm so happy to have Vivek Shreya join us now to talk about it. Hey, Vivek, welcome to City Line. It's been a while. How are you? It's really, really nice to see you, Tracy, even though we're not together together. <laughs> it's as close as we're going to get, girl. So first, exactly. let's talk about this title, How to Fail as a Pop Star. So in our society, failures are usually presented as stepping stones. And in this book, you're saying no to that. You're saying we can and we should own our failures. So tell us a bit about that. Well, exactly. I think that we are part of a culture that really, really is scared of failure. Like even when people would hear the title, How to Fail as a Pop Star, they would be like, but 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 you've done this and you've done this and you've done this. And I've had people like recite my bio back to me. <laughs> and I think simultaneously, we're also a culture that really, really celebrates success. And I think, you know, the whole point of social media is so that you can go online and be like, hey, look at me. I'm amazing. I did this. Like, Nobody goes on social media to say, I didn't sign a book deal today, or I didn't drop a single today. <laughs> so, you know, I think I really, really wanted to push against this because I think that failure is a universal experience. And there is a kind of pain to pretend that you didn't fail at something. And, and I wanted this book to be part of that conversation of creating space for, for failure. The reality is we are not always winning, and that is okay. So How to exactly. Fail as a Pop Star is actually a play which marked your debut uh, theatrical work and was a one-woman show. So why was a play the form you wanted to use to tell this story rather than maybe a traditional novel? Well, whenever I'm approaching an idea, I'm always trying to think about what art medium best suits, you know, realizing the idea. And this idea actually came from reading music biographies. I read the Timbaland biography and the Buffy St. Marie bi biography. But music biographies like books, they really rely on one key thing, which is success. So, for instance, with the Timbaland biography, when you're reading it and he talks about when he wrote and recorded Pony with Genuine, we all know Pony. So we can get into the book and it can it can conjure a kind of feeling of excitement and nostalgia. But with someone like me, unfortunately, people aren't necessarily familiar with my music. And so I, I really was like, how, what medium can you tell an anti-success story? And I started to think about theater because I thought in theater, people don't have to know who I am and I can actually use live storytelling, live singing, live dancing to tell my story. Mm, I love that. And I also like the story of how you got Tegan and Sarah's attention by throwing your CD on stage during their show, almost hitting Tegan in the head. And it ultimately led you to opening for them on tour, which is incredible. So what was your takeaway lesson from this? I mean, I think when I look at the whole journey of my desire to be a pop star, the thing that I come back to every time is, wow, how audacious for a brown <laughs> queer femme kid in Edmonton <laughs> to think that they were going to be like the next Madonna. And, you know, so there's a part of me that just has so much love and respect and admiration for that kid. You know, they've become such huge supporters of my work and we've become really good friends. And I often think like if I hadn't put myself out there, in that way, if I hadn't just taken the leap, <laughs> literally, um, you know, I would have lost this friendship and, and support and camaraderie with these two. And I think, um, you know, that for me is a big takeaway from that experience. You can't teach audacity. So I think that it's kind of a beautiful thing <laughs> that, true. yeah, you come by it honestly. Now, you write about how you always believed in meritocracy. And I, I love the, this topic, this whole idea of a meritocracy. Your talent coupled with hard work means success. It's not always the case. So tell us the moment when you started to realize this might not be how it works. Well, as a musician, like, especially back in the day, I don't know what it's like now, but it's like the, the dream was a record deal. You know, you needed to get the record deal to, to, to hit pop stardom as a, as a starting point. And I did get a record deal. I got signed to a label in Paris, and that sounded amazing and glamorous. And then they just shelved me for like 18 months. And it was then I was sort of in my late 20s. And I started to realize, wait a second, just because I work hard at something or I think I'm talented 
doesn't actually mean this is going to work out. And pop music in particular, there is a clock on it. And I think for me, turning, you know, almost turning 30 really put things into perspective, like this might not happen. The book is a journey uh, in radical self-acceptance. You want us to be able to embrace our failures um, and, and, you know, maybe take the shame away from our failures and really sort of get in there and grieve them and mourn. Is there anything else you want readers uh, to take away from this book on their, on their own journeys? Well, you know, the book is dedicated to Whitney Houston, who's like, you know, the, the artist I credit for opening the world of Western pop music to me. Before that, it was all like my parents' Bollywood. And there's also a quote and an epigraph at the, the beginning, which is from a Whitney Houston song, The Greatest Love of All. Um, you know, and in, in the song, she says, if I fail or if I succeed, they can't take away my dignity. Mm. And for me, I think that that's the big lesson, right, is that like, it's so important just to try, right? Like, I, yes, I have failed and I honor that. But in that conversation, I also honor the fact that I really tried. And I think that's all we can do is try. That's all we can do. Try and try and try again. I appreciate the way your angle. I really love the way that you are breaking it down for us because I think that a healthy dose of realism um, and respect for the, the chances we take is a good thing for all of us to learn. So thank you so much. It's always great having you with us, Vivek. <laughs> so nice to see you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Great to see you too. How to Fail as a Pop Star is out now, everyone.